its own location. And then uh, what it does is it queries the, the, uh, the backend server, which is written in Node.js, and uh, it performs a RethinkDB query where it's looking for the earthquake that is nearest to the user's location. So you can see here in the, uh, the, the left-hand column, it's detected this earthquake that's uh, 678 miles from, uh, from our location. And um, that, that's all done with simple requal queries against a geospatial index. Um, so I'm going to show you now a little bit of how this works, um, you know, how the, the earthquake data is fetched and uh, how that, that query is performed um, to identify the nearest earthquake. So first, I just want to show you what the data looks like. Um, the data all comes from USGS. They provide a, a, a feed in, J, in a JSON format of all of the latest earthquakes that are above you know, 2.3 magnitude. Um, so what you're looking at here is a single record from that data set uh, as it's stored in the database. Oh, yeah. Everybody see that? Yeah, so you can see that uh, we have our uh, location geometry here, uh, showing the, uh, the latitude and longitude of the earthquake. And uh, then we have all of this metadata. Um, there's actually some, some kind of unusual values here. There's a tsunami property, which will indicate whether the earthquake caused a tsunami. Um, so yeah, so you can see it's, uh, it's an earthquake and uh, time zone. And then there's a URL with additional data, so you can actually pull down more detailed information about a specific earthquake if you cared to. Um, so what we're doing in the application is we're fetching this feed from the USGS and we're, we're adding all of the new records to the database. So I'll show you now what that looks like. Um, you can see, is that big enough? A little more? Okay, so this refresh uh, query up here, what this is doing is it's fetching the, uh, the, the JSON data and it's inserting it in the database. You can see at the very top here, this URL, this is the, uh, the, basically the rest endpoint on the USGS server where we're fetching that JSON from. And RethinkDB, our, in our requal query language, we have this command called rhttp. And what that does is it'll actually perform an HTTP GET request on the database itself, like the database can be used to retrieve data. Um, so we pass the URL from you know, the USGS feed into that HTTP command. Uh, and then we take uh, like the features property because it'll return an object with some various things. We're going to pull out a property called features. And then uh, we use the merge function here to perform a little transformation. Um, the, uh, the data that's that we retrieve from this feed is, is ostensibly in GeoJSON format, which we natively support in RethinkDB. But um, the USGS uses a slightly non-standard variant that has like an altitude value in addition to latitude and longitude. And we don't support that in RethinkDB. So uh, what I need to do is transform that data before I include it in the database. I want to create uh, a native uh, RethinkDB GeoJSON point using the, uh, the, the latitude and longitude that we're pulling out of the database. Um, so that's what that R point command does. You can see here, it's kind of nice because like with, with, with Requal, you know, even though we're actually retrieving the data in the database itself, like the remote data lake, we can manipulate it any way we want and get like the data structure that, that makes the most sense for our application. Um, so that's, that's kind of a nice feature there. And um, the uh, right down here, conflict replace, what, what this does is make it so that um, if there are records that we've retrieved that we already have, then it'll just overwrite them because we're going to be polling this endpoint uh, at an interval and retrieving earthquakes. So when there are new ones, it'll add those, and if there are existing ones, it'll just override them with whatever up-to-date data they've got about them. Um, so I'll show you real quick. Uh, here we have the set interval function, um, and what this is doing is uh, it's just like periodically performing this refresh and grabbing the new data and uh, inserting it into the database. And um, it's also purging old data. If you look, if you look here at this, this filter where we're doing delete operation, we're purging things that are, that are older than about 30 days. So you can actually do all of this with requal queries. It's really great to be able to like, maintain the data set and fetch all the data and not have to do all of this in your code. You, know, you can actually do it all with requal queries. Um, now down here we have a simple app.get. Like this is creating an, an endpoint. We're using Express in Node.js. And uh, we've created this slash quakes endpoint that the uh, client can hit just to retrieve the list of earthquakes ordered by magnitude. Um, and uh, that's 
down here is where the interesting bit takes place. We have this endpoint slash nearest. This is what the user uh, is hitting when, when we perform that query to find out like, where, the, where the closest earthquake is to the user's location. On the client side, the, the front end for this application is built with uh, AngularJS, and uh, the mapping is done with a library called Leaflet. And um, what we do when, when we finish fetching the user's coordinates, we, uh, we, we have a, like a, an AJAX request that, to the back end where it sends those coordinates to this nearest endpoint. And, um, it's going to use this get nearest command uh, against our geometry index, which is our a geospatial index that we've created on that property where we have the, the, the location information. And it's basically going to look for the nearest quake within uh, 1,000 miles. And um, you can see here we specify unit miles. You can actually use whatever units make most sense to you for your, your development purposes. Um, and once we've got that data, all we have to do is pass it back to the front end so that it can, it can plot it. And um, in, in the front end application, which is, you know, like I said, but with Angular, um, it's, it's just going to add this little thing that says distance from you in the, in the specific record where, uh, you know, where we've de determined that this is the earthquake that's actually closest. So I think this is a nice little demo app. It, it, like it, it really illustrates how easy it is to, to get up and running and um, take advantage of uh, geospatial indexing and things like that. Um, there are a few other simple features here, like you know, a date selector. You can you can filter for like if I only wanted to see the earthquakes that happened today, um, I can filter that way. Um, so yeah, but it's it's just a really nice simple thing. I, I kind of wanted to go a step further and build something a little more elaborate. So uh, I'm going to show you now another demo um, that uh, that I've been working on. Um, I know everybody loves cats, right? So. Th this demo, what this is doing is it's actually showing you every cat picture posted to Instagram in real time. Um, so Instagram has this really great uh, real-time API system where you can use webhooks. You, know, you basically say, like, this is my URL endpoint, and you should just ping me whenever you have new data that matches whatever my, my parameters are. So what I've, to what I've done here is I've told Instagram to, to ping me every time somebody posts a picture that has a tag called cats of Instagram. Um, which is a very popular tag on Instagram, as you can clearly see. Um, so now the, the, the thing here, though, is that the, the way that their real-time API works, when it sends you that, that signal, all it does is give you a timestamp to let you know that there are new records. It doesn't actually send you the records. Um, so you have to go out and fetch those records you know, after, after you've received that signal. So again, what I'm doing here is I'm using the, the uh, requal HTTP command to perform that fetch operation. Like, it, it makes it incredibly simple. I don't even have to, like, handle those clients side. I just fetch the new records, add it to the database. But now here's the thing. I want to know about all of the records that it added because I want to be able to use socket IO to pass those to my front end, right? So this is really where the magic comes into play. We have a feature called change feeds. We allow you to subscribe to changes on a specific table in your uh, RethinkDB database. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. This is pretty cool. Um, let's make that a little bigger. OK, so this publish photo endpoint, th this is basically the, the URL endpoint that we've given Instagram. You know, this is what they're hitting every time they want to tell us that there's, that there's new, new data to, to pull. And um, you can see here, where we're, we're using, you know, we're creating a URL for the, you know, to pull the, the records, and we're using the RHTTP command um, to actually retrieve them. And then we're doing, you know, a merge thing again here to convert the uh, geolocation tagging data on the photos into a location. Um, and, and then it just inserts it into the database, right? But we don't actually have the records because it's all done on the databases side. So what, what, I, want, what I wanted to show you here this is especially cool. We have this code here where we're, we're calling this changes command on the instacat table. And what this does, every time there's a new item added to that instacat table, um, this callback is, is going to execute. Um, we're we're going to get a new value on this cursor here, and it, it'll execute this function. And um, all we're doing here is taking the item and using um, socket IO to pass the, uh, the JSON object right to the user. And it makes it so incredibly simple um, to, to build this kind of real-time application because, I mean, you, you, can, you can create these, these subscriptions that, that allow you to know what's changing where. 
And this feature is going to get a lot more advanced. You know, in, in upcoming releases, we're going to make it so that you can do all kinds of crazy filtering and aggregation with this changes operation. So you can see, like, like say, for example, you have a real-time list of the top 10 players with the highest score in your game. You can make it so that when the ranking changes of the top 10 players, like with an order by operation, that's, that's when it sends you this, this, uh, this notice that, that you have a change. And then you can, you can update it only when you know, you, the things are happening that you actually want to update your users about. Whereas right now, it's kind of a blunt instrument. It's telling you about all of the table updates. So I mean, this is a really compelling feature. I mean, eventually, you'll be able to, to, to get changes on any filtered sequence. Um, and it, it really changes the way that you architect these real-time applications. I mean, in this case, it made it so that I could get away with doing the, uh, like the, the polling for the new records on the server or in the database because you know, I can find out what records are added without having to manually parse all the JSON myself and do all that stuff. Um, so you know, that, that's pretty cool in this sense. But in a larger application, what it'll let you do is really start decoupling the pieces of your architecture. Um, because you can have all of these different components that are putting things into the database, and then you can have your, you know, the part of your application that's speaking to your users at the front end through Socket I/O or what have you, and all it has to do is monitor the tables with change feeds. So I think you can get a lot of really great scalability and a lot of flexibility by taking this this approach. So I want to show you one more thing real quick. You know, we see here this grid with all the cats appearing. Um, there is a map. Uh, you might recall that I mentioned that. Uh, we have geolocation information about all of the cats. So whenever somebody posts a cat and it actually has a, uh, a geo tag, let me refresh that here, um, we're going to get the cat on the, on the map. And you can click to see the uh, cats from all these different places. Yeah, and this will add in real time too. So when, when somebody posts one, you see one just appear, you know. So yeah, again, like when you start using these features together, you can do some really exciting things. So um, does anybody have any questions?